Hey guys, welcome to day three of NAM 2019 in Anaheim, California. We're doing our editor's picks today. We have awesome guests here. We have Juan Alderetti and Nick Reinhardt from Pedals and Effects to yes. tell us about hey. their favorite stuff from the show today too. Uh, Jason Shadrick and I are gonna tell you too. Uh, Jason, do you wanna start? Mm -hmm. You me in the middle of the <laughs> Finish your beer. So, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna start with uh, something we were talking about, and I want you guys to chime in because you heard it too. Is the Beatronics Swarm, which is like a fuzzy harmonizer. It's kind of hard to. You said P, it's like a PLL. Yeah. Well, you stole my one of my favorites. <laughs> I rolled up and I was like, Oh yeah, Beatronics Swarm, and you're like, No, dude, that's my favorite. My like, dibs, oh, all right, dibs. Whatever. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. It, we just saw it ten minutes ago, and it's a like a multi voice PLL. Yeah. With a tunable frequencies and all the intervals and all that stuff. But, the, but they name all the knobs something unusual, so it's not like you can look at the knobs and know what everything does in a the way. The aesthetic of Beatronics is light years above basically anything else in this entire building. But you know, we got to give a shout out to Joe Barisi because apparently Joe Barisi got them hip to one of the ones that he had, a, an original showman, and then there was another one that I forget, but they check those out and then they came up with their concept so Joe and then they Breezy said they needed from... Breezy's oh Br Joe Who, Breezy he's a producer producer yeah 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 he did like Queens of the Stone Age okay, I okay. mean he's done yeah. a ton of records I've actually done a record with him but he's a great engineer producer and um, he has a shit ton of gear you guys yeah. should do something with him because he has so much fucking gear it's crazy Beatronics got like yes the they it was like a not a collaboration, but they got the blessing from Joe Breezy. Like, yeah. Hey, does this sound as good as yours? And like, he's like, it's awesome. Right. Do it. Yeah. Kill so it. Oh, cool. well, there you go. Nice. Pedals and effects coming with the fucking <laughs> knowledge. Yo. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was mine. Okay. You guys want to go or should I go? Nick will go. Nick's All right. gonna go. Uh, straight up Ranger effects out of the London, UK. This wild dude named David. Who's this like insane looking guy with big red hair and he looks yeah. like it's almost like troll hair. He looks he's like a tall crazy. shaggy. And he's the sweetest, most rad guy. We met him three years ago? Two or three years ago. Oh, I, I wanna say more. But it was either two or two or three NAMs ago and like everything that he has made has blown us away and so we're like, What's David coming out with this year? And he had a couple of things which are on our list and he has this thing called the drone ranger which is a delay pedal, like, ooh, delay pedal, wow, crazy. With two, like, um, tones. It's a tone generator delay, and they're like sub tunable subtones with like a, a white noise blast in between that's like connected to a thing. It's so weird to describe, but you take these the tone generator of these two different intervals and you can go in between them and then send that into the delay portion of the pedal. It's this wild thing, and he has these custom boxes made from a metal like trapezoids shop. Trapezoids. Trapezoids and, and weird things. He designs them, and then he goes to the metal shop up the street and says, hey, can you do this? And then they come back two hours later with the prototype of it. Yeah. It's bonkers. But wow. you're going to see the photo on the screen right now. <laughs> There's a little – he has a little um, window cut out in the actual metal box, right? And in the window, you see the, uh, the circuit board underneath. And the circuit board is printed to look like a street like corner with little lights blinking and there's like a dead body and all this crazy stuff. I didn't stuff. see that. It's oh, wild. Wow. It's you, amazing you, looking. You guys are like the second or third people who with very good taste that told us about this today. I was kind of roaming the floor to find stuff to do videos on because we had a few open slots and Giannis from Jam Pedals was like, I was like, what have you seen that's cool? And he's like, come with me. It took me to David at Ranger. And then uh, the guys from Electro Faustus, same thing. They're like, that's the one cool thing we've seen. It's crazy. And we met David like eight years ago, Charlie Softly, our gear editor, and I like eight or nine years ago at Music Mesa when he had the, uh, when he first came out with the, I think it's the Dr. Frankenstein, Frankenstein. or something like yep. that. It's got yep. the little, the latch kind of like in Young Frankenstein yeah. when they, you know, the, the latch that brings the electricity to bring Frankenstein alive. And yeah, ever since well, then, like. Well, speaking of that, your, Your favorite next pick? pedal oh. is the, the Frankenstein. Right. Yes, he it's like a new version, yes. right? He, did, he has a, a the chop uh, buzz, so it's like a basically it's like this awesome fun. He's really great with buzzes, and then what he did was he threw a a square wave 
tremolo on it, which I've done a ton of. I've, I've put it on Mars Volta records and sound. That's just, it's just basically a fuzz or any kind of distorted element, and then you chop it in a square wave tremolo, so it sounds like you know what I mean. But his also gets controlled by his like little weird what is it Igor yeah yeah Igor. have you guys seen the Igor, Igor controller yeah, yeah. the Igor the You've Igor the Igor yeah. little it's like amazing. it's like it's, it's his version of an expression pedal so he would just be playing and then you step on it and then the chop comes in so you're like say you're playing some rip down and man and his foot would go on it, it dude he just thinks of the shit that like a, a real fucking crazy creative fucking musician is thinking and, and he is that but you know so his shit Right. Yeah. Use one of those in your rig. We did a rig rundown with these guys recently, and you demoed that. Love, love David Ranger stuff. I was using this other really, really good fuzz pedal. He said he does some of the most creative, best fuzz pedals. Right. And like that's the whole thing about fuzz pedals. It's like, oh, here we go. So and so's got another fuzz pedal. But every fuzz David has done is like, that's it. I want. Yes. I need that. So yeah, I had it on my board all last year. Sweet. All right, my pick is. I didn't, since I was doing a lot of roaming, trying to set up to fill in these extra video slots we have for tomorrow. Join us tomorrow, by the way. Yeah. Um, I only have one pick today. Was kind of a surprise. Have you guys heard of this? I'm not a huge blues rock fan, but there's a, a guy who's kind of rising on the scene, Jared James Nichols. Yeah. I hadn't heard of him actually before we did an Epiphone video. Oh, JJN? <laughs> yes. I don't know. What he <laughs> but he's this big dude. He looks kind of like Zach Wild in the late 80s or early 90s or something but he has a signature yeah. epiphone but it, that's actually what we saw today was his new black star amp it's based on like their mark ii revision of the ht20 amps but it's a small little head on a vertical 212 cab it's i guess the amps used to be el34s they're el84s now that's the best sounding black star i've ever heard and he wow. wailed in the video and it's just and he's like a straight fingerstyle player. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, he's very theatrical, but a super nice, friendly guy too. It was, it was cool. I will say, I love a vertical two twelve. I think that's like a really cool looking, like yeah, underrated yeah. shape for a cab. Yeah, and I guess the only thing he did with his, it's like exactly like the regular HT twenty that they just brought the Mark II version out of, but his is green, and in the cab, it's like mismatched Celestion speakers. But nice. it sounded really good. Cool. You guys got any more? Jason? I got one, yeah. I got one more. So I went, uh, after lunch today, I went over to the Synergy booth. Excuse me. Went over to the Synergy booth, and they had Steve Vai in there. <clears throat> and so I sat with Steve Vai, and he walked me through um, the Synergy. Uh, what Basically what they do is they make modular preamps. And they're two preamps, and they're based on, like, basements and deluxes and Morgan and Diesel and Friedman, and so the idea is that you take this. Uh, it's kind of like the old Randall module thing yeah. from a long time ago, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Steve Vai is is on board with that, and they're going. And he kind of announced in the video that he's going to be working on a uh, a Steve Vai signature model. But we got to sit there, and he went through. So basically, in like a four rack, four space rack setup, you can have ten different. They're like Channels. this size, right? Yeah, they're not very big. Yeah, exactly. the, Isn't it just two, two tall, two racks tall, and then you can fit but, four but, modules in it or something? Well, each I think each rack space you can fit two next right. two. That's like, the but Billy he can Corgan stack. thing. I think yeah, that's similar to what Billy Corgan does. Rundown. Yeah, on his he goes yeah. through that, and he's I had no idea that that's it's that type of thing. thing. And so well, I mean, I think Randall did it, and then I think Ignator did it, and now it's. And now the, synergy. I didn't know anything about this. Like we, when we were setting Crazy. up videos before the NAMM show started, there, we had this appointment. Hey, come to Synergy for a Steve Vai thing. I'm like, what is Synergy? Well, it turns out that Stephen Fryette, badass amp designer from Fryette Amplification, he started VHD a long time ago. You guys know Fryette, right? Of or course. VHD amps. Fryette? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Fryette. You're bullshitting. Dude, duh. Stephen Fryette, I'm ser well, I talked about Stephen Fryette's uh, Sound City amps yesterday as one of my uh, picks, but he designed the architecture for these synergy things, like oh, okay. the power amp and everything, and then other builders build the modules that go yeah. into them. Pretty yeah. cool. And and I mean, so in the video you'll see, like you know, we talked about it, and he walks through. You know, at some point he's just like, "All right, Jason, I'm gonna play for a while. You just stomp on whatever one you want." So during the video, I'm just 
kicking on basements or That's legacy or tight. whatever, you know. So you've actually jammed with Steve Vai, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you were Steve Vai's roadie. I was Steve Vai's roadie for about five minutes. So, go. but it was, and he had like his full like two 412 cabs right behind us. So it was like pushing air. How many 412s? Yeah. He had two, one on each side in this, in this, in one, in their little like demo room. And it Iceberg. was pushing. It was a physical experience sitting there while he was just noodling for like 10 minutes. Rad. So it was very impressive and you know keep an eye out for the and they make they make uh, like heads and combos so you can like buy a head or a combo that has these slots built in so you can have a, a four channel amp if you want a diesel and a basement or or this or that and then he just switched through it using MIDI I'm now assuming. the modules each have like a tube preamp but then the each module itself has, has power tubes right yeah each module has I think two channels of a of whatever type of amp you want so he had I think he had 10 set up, 10 different channels of five different amps or something like that. It was a lot. It was a cool. lot. Cool. Oh, come on. You let's get back to pedals. Let's get back to pedals. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, now, hey, now oh, yeah. Speaking about of pedals, what's your next one? Uh, Speaking of pedals. Oh, mine is going to be, Nick's going to help me with this because I don't remember the name. But Source Audio's Spectrum Intelligent Filter. Intelligent filter. God, I, I, I was going to just call it an envelope filter and thank God I did because it's not just an envelope filter. It is definitely their, their synth pedal that you can go in with into your computer and really design stuff. It's stereo in, stereo out. And a lot of people don't give a shit because we're bass players and guitar players, but every synth keyboard player I know always goes, is there any pedal that has stereo, I mean like a stereo input, meaning two inputs and then two outputs? That, that synth pedal does. So you, there, any dude with a synth that has a stereo out will be able to use this and get freaky with it. But you know, I checked it out. It has like so many, so many ways to create synth sounds. With their you, Neuro app Right, thing. the Neuro app, right. So there, it's four knobs, right. but then you go in and you get deep, just like, uh, like I, I work in Reason as like my whatever, like sequencers and like making like corny electronic music. And so when he showed me his little booklet, he, you know, Roger's got that dorky binder right. every year. Right. He always he does. Pulls it up and I'm like, he Dude, always this does. Guy knows what's up with the binder. Every like year the we get a transparent sit plastic sleeves. Literally, and yes. Yeah. He got it. He has his binder and he flips it up and he shows it to you and he shows you the signal path of everything. You saw yeah, that, right? right? It's crazy. So it's, there's so much editing you can do with like four different voices and format filters and all this crazy stuff. It's like next level yes. synth. Yes, now, exactly. And then you, when you see the photo that you guys are posting up here right now, it's, you can see in my <laughs> pick guys really like that it has a little or... MIDI controller that you can store. I think it was 148 presets. I mean, uh, that presets that you can put in there, something gnarly like that. So, like, you're a fool if you don't own this pedal <laughs> that's it, coming out in April, May. Yeah, impossible to own it right now because they're yeah, not even done April, with May, it. April, May. April, May. Roger are told these, me. Are the synth sounds based on, like, classic old synths or, like... It's, everything man and it's really because you can get in there and detail it to what you're into it's everything it gets nick's it was, warp sound it, it gets, was like 30 different like starting points of right. like oh square one they hadn't even labeled it that was the funny thing jeff goes we got to label all this stuff and he's like well we didn't have time but it's all square one square two square three square four you know like down the list sign a million signs or whatever it was like yeah it was deep very very wow. deep and, and the craziest thing is i go well look i go i you know i know you guys got distortion in there but i go but lately i've been way into using bit crushing for my distortion because it's gated it's easy to control it's not all radical and it sounds fucked up and cool right and they go yeah here we go and then sure enough they have fucking bit reduction in the distortion yeah. section so yes it, they thought of everything that's cool Chiller. that's cool you want to lead us out i got a pick um I saw a guitar that I thought was really, really cool and special. So on day three, I finally made it up to the Fender booth. And so much props to Fender because for two years in a row, they've just made weird shit, which is like, it's not safe. Fender is not doing the safe thing. They're like, no, we want to do interesting stuff because that's what the landscape is now for gear. So they have something called the Alternate Series or the Alternative Series. I forget what it is. Parallel Al Universe. Alternate Reality. Alternate Reality. Uh, alternate well, that's reality. a Chili Pepper song. No, no, no. no last that was year, last year. Last year this year, is, it's the Alter same type of idea, <laughs> but it's called the Alternate Reality. The Alternate Reality. Yes. And it's like a different one every month or whatever. I believe Limited so, edition yeah. Thing. yeah. So they've got a couple up there, but the one that 
there was there was two. There's the Meteora, which some jerk named Bob Bruno took my Meteora the other day. <laughs> Just kidding, Bob, I love you. Uh, but then they have this other offset guitar called a Powercaster, which I don't even know what it was based on. Or and what you'll it, see a picture of it right now. Um, it's rad. The, actually, what the neck <laughs> radius of it, that's what freaks me out about new guitars is when they blow it on the neck. Like, I have to have, like, a cozy neck to play, right? And whatever the, the shape of it and the, everything about it was so good, and it was this kind of bizarre wood. I'm like, what even is that? And he's all, my guy Matt Farrar says, toasted maple. I'm like, that just sounds delicious. Makes me hungry. <laughs> so it, it's just a rad offset guitar, like hard tail piece. Just like, it just looks like it's waiting to be thrashed. Now you were showing me a picture, picture before. I think, is it a humbucker in the bridge and like a P90 yeah, in the neck? Yeah, exactly. Which that's also kind of like an odd, weird thing. Like a humbucker. Oh, and also it had, it's got this button on it. I think it had this button. <laughs> Either the Meteora or the Powercaster has this we little weird button on it that switches up the controls. In other words, like you can, for like volume swells, you can make the rear pickup be the front knob and the front knob be the rear knob or something. It was crazy, but I just like, Are there, you sure? there was something really bizarre about this little button. I was like, what's a secret button? And one of the guys goes, I don't know. We got to go ask what that button is. And we found out, wow. but anyways, props to Fender. They're doing really cool things. And like, I just, I think that's really cool. Sweet. You guys oh, yes, there's the bass. There's a bass at this NAMM show. Tuck rule? Carrie Nordstrand. Yes. So Nordstrand, I've been friends with for a long time. He makes amazing pickups. Everybody knows him for his pickups and his basses. You know, he's kind of, he was like, kind of like mellowing out the pedal, I mean, uh, the bass building. But then all of a sudden, there was this hype up for Goya, Italian Goya Panther basses, which I own a couple of. And he's like, Man, I don't know. Like a lot of people really like that this body design, 30 inch short scale, but the design of the body is just so beautiful. And he goes, "Can I borrow your bases? Because I want to kind of ape them." So I gave them to him. I had, he had both my Panthers. He apes them. They're called the Cat Base. They have some other name that nobody can pronounce. So I just call them the Cat Bases, which is what he calls them. But they're the basically, you know, from the Goya Panther, and they have these switches up on top, which is the key. The, the, the switches are like tone controls and pickup selection. But when you play with effects and you're always trying to like make sure that your, your effect sound is right, I used my Goya Panther because of that because I could just, oh, this shit's this not activating right. So I'll switch a switch and then all of a sudden, boom, kicks in, the, the, the synth pedals sound right, the fuzzles sound right. Carrie did the same thing. It's got four switches and three switches so you can be on the fly switching your tone like that just like voice preset voicing switches yeah so it's like part of a, like i think there's four of them that just do tone control and then there's three that's just pickup selection or vice versa vice versa vice versa so it's like you know front pickup rear pickup both pickups i think a face pickup and then the tone controls bass middle treble so you can just be getting tone at your disposal right here i know bass preamp Active motherfuckers use that shit, but we, you know, Carrie was like, "This isn't going to be an active bass; it's going to be passive." So it's all about the tone knobs. And is tone that bass tone. here? He yeah, has a finished it's one. Here. It's there in that photo. Did do you need to leave right now? <laughs> what, what color is it? Oh, so I mean, typically he did try to ape a Fiat green. It's a little like the Fiat green because, it, like Goya's did Fiat green. It's really awesome. And then he did a red one. I think he's doing a sunburst. So he, right here, I think he has a I think he has a Fiat green, and I think he has just a black standard. Did you play it? He's like, we walked right by him right now on the way here, and I was like, fuck, we don't have time because we got to get here. So, <laughs> well, no, Premier Guitar held us up, Nick. Thank, thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> Terry's actually doing really cool pedals now too. I just reviewed his new yes. code yes, name, uh, Black Hat Fuzz, which is right. really huh? cool. Yeah. Rocket Surgeon. It's, I don't know about it's this. It's a different brand. Rocket Surgeon. But it's, yeah, oh. it's called yes. Rocket Surgeon. Okay, okay. But yeah, it's cool stuff. Anyway, you guys got any more? Should we let people go? And I think we're good. Cool. Thank I, you. I hated everything else I saw. <laughs> I hated everything. Uh, Thank you. JK. Thank you, Nick and Juan. Yep. Check Thank out you. Pedals and Effects. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. And check back tomorrow for our last Editor's Picks video of Day 4 of NAM. Thank you. Later. Right. Boom.